right, guys. The uh, Backwoods uh, former Jack of all trades guy here. Uh, check this out. So um, I have a little silo, but uh, it doesn't really work for my feed storage. And uh, and I was using the um, wood chipper to grind my grain, as you saw in a previous video. And I refined that and made it work a lot better. Um, but now I'm going through so much grain, uh, it was convenient. I found another farmer, a larger scale farmer, that has a big old grinder. He can do 6,000 pounds at a time. So I started having him grind the corn for me uh, and mixing it. So once it's mixed, I put it into this homemade feed bin. Now I put these boards horizontal on the back, vertical on the sides, all right? And I just staple up plastic to fill the gaps so that the grain's not leaking out through the gaps. Now you could put battens on like you would a shed. I probably will do that at some point. But anyway, I have plastic down on the floor so that when it's sitting on the ground, the uh, moisture has a harder time coming up through the, the grain. And I cover the top with plastic. As you see there, I just lay it over and weigh it down good. It works really nice. So I had it on the trailer, weighed down. And now I'm gonna show you how this bin works. So you load it on your, your dual axle, make sure your trailer is heavy enough. This is a, a 7,000 pound trailer and I hold, well, I might've been overweight a little, but don't do that. Anyhow, I'm not gonna show my license plate number. You can't tell DOT. Uh, it's farm use. Farm use, we're allowed. We're allowed to overweigh, right? Anyhow, be safe. Don't overload your, your trailer or your truck. But anyhow, this has little four by six, treated four by sixes underneath here. And I have this an angle cut on it. So it works like a sled. And I have the same thing on the other side. And what that allows me to do is just hook it up to the compact tractor with chains and just sled it on and off. So it'd be hard to get on there full, but it's uh, easy to get it on there empty. So I use the loader tractor, push it up on there uh, and use the tractor to pull it off. That's the hard part because my tractor is a little bit underweight for it. But I'll show you that video here in a second. We're gonna pull this off. And to just show you how this works, as you feed the feed, you just keep taking boards off here so you can get in farther. You can see I've already been feeding it with it sitting on the trailer, but I need the trailer today. So I just keep pulling boards off and eventually I take off enough boards that I can just crawl right in there and go to the front and be bucketing my feet out every day. So I make this plastic on top, it's just like so and fold it up out of my way. A lot of times, honestly, I just crawl in from the side around the bottom of the plastic and just go in and get my buckets of feed and out I go. It works really nice. So uh, give this a try if you're if you're in a situation where I am where you need to cart feed around in, uh, in bulk. So here um, you go. Just a quick note, something I should mention here. Um, the bottom of this thing is like two inch thick hardwood maple, uh, big, it actually might be two and a half inch thick. It's really thick stuff I had sewn. So that's what the floor is. Um, and I use the Torx head deck screws, Phillips head screws and square head screws. I don't like them at all. They strip. And since you're going to be taking these on and off, go with the Torx head. You'll, you'll, you'll be glad you did. Um, so go with the Torx head deck screws. Um, and the way this is designed is I can, this is square. So I want to say it's five foot six, five foot six wide by five foot six high. Yeah. I think that's what it is. Five foot six wide by five six foot six wide and it's eight foot long. Now, the reason I build it square is because I may not always need this as a feed bin and I didn't want to waste the flooring, the pressure treated sled uh, things I put here and I didn't want to waste all the boards. So these horizontal boards in the future, I can just turn them vertical and turn this thing into a little shed or, you know, put a trusses on top, actually, you know, you want to put trusses and a roof on there, but I can convert this to a shed at any time or an animal cage. So five foot six wide, five foot six high and eight feet long. Um, it's actually maybe seven foot eight, something like that. Uh, so that size, I can easily haul 6,000 pounds. You could actually fit more in there. My truck can't handle it but it'll hold more than that. So if you're ever in a case where you can just have it, the, the feed brought right to you, you could put more than 6,000 pounds in there. So 
there's some dimensions for you. I'm gonna get this thing off the trailer and get back to work. One more thing to point out here before I unload. I did let these these sleds or skis as I call them uh, stick out past here a little bit and that you can see why. I want my chain and binder. See, I use chains and binders when I'm going down the road to hold this in place. So you want your chain to catch. I could have actually left a little more. If you let two inches there, you'd be better off. I only left like three quarters of an inch. It still works, but it's not great. And then in the center, I had a two by four. I just put underneath that thick flooring just to kind of tie it all together. And um, that helps with this process too. So your chains rest on that. We hook around to the tractor. I also have my digging iron on hand because my tractor, I have a 30 horsepower here and I have a 34 horsepower. The 34 horsepower doesn't have a loader on it right now. So I'm using the 30 horsepower diesel tractor, Massey Ferguson 1240 to be exact. Um, and it's this is a little much for this. So I've got my digging iron here. And when it hangs up on things like the little piece of metal at the back of the trailer, I actually get in there and help it a little bit. Two people would be great because you could have one person on the tractor and one person running the digging iron. Or just have a bigger tractor. That's an option too. So normally where that plastic is laying under the trailer towers there is normally where this thing sits. And I back down the, the hill here, you can't tell that there's a hill there between the uh, back of the truck tires and the trailer. Um, normally I don't go that far down. I back down and uh, my truck's spinning in the mud. I can't go forward. So I'm not on as steep of a hill as I normally am, which I'm sure helps me to slide this thing off and uh, I can't get it to come off. I moved a little bit, but I can't get it to come off. Plus I might've had more feed in this time than previously. So I took about four or 500 pounds of feed out and I think that's gonna make the difference and I think I'll be able to get it to go now. All right, let's try this again. I'll see if I can succeed this time. Then it's muddier this time than, than other times that I've done it. So that's definitely contributing to the struggle I'm having. But my tractor is undersized for this task, but I'll get it, you watch. I stop before coming off the back of that little dovetail on the trailer. The reason for that is I usually take my floor jack and jack it up and make that thing angled a lot harder. Um, but I'm a little understaffed today, as you might have noticed. And it's on an angle anyhow. 
and there is plastic in the floor below the feed to keep moisture from coming up but i like to have two layers of plastic that's another benefit to jacking it up i can get that second layer on the ground Whew. running that digging iron is a little tricky don't do this alone make sure you've got two people be safe don't break the safety rules like i did now i did have the tractor in low range it can't move very fast but say the tractor front end was going to come off the ground there'd be nobody there to push the clutch in do not do that if you do don't blame me